perspective on the Marketplace Network. Welcome to Pastor Perspective. Of course, I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken. With me is a special guest. Took me a long time to finally get Dr. Joel. That's right. I've got the Dr. Joel here tonight on Studio Live. Dr. Joel, thank you so much for coming up to see him. Yes, welcome. Yes. God bless you. Mm -hmm. So tonight, I real quickly, uh, I just want to jump right into it. I know we're live. Hi to all of our Facebook and YouTube members. I just want to say this real quick. Um, Dr. Joel is a, a teacher in Bellflower, correct? He's a senior pastor. He's been doing this a long time. But I got to ask, how did you get saved, sir? Yeah. So I praise God for bringing me here on this uh, television network. Mm -hmm. And I praise God for Dr. Ken and Pastor Tim and Bishop and uh, Sister Lily. Pam. I praise God and I thank God. You see, I was uh, born in a city called Ahmedabad. Mm. in a state called Gujarat in India and uh, it was in 1975 I was born again at the age of 12. My father was a professor in a uh, government engineering university over there and he loved the Lord very much and he has organized a crusade Mm. in city of Ahmedabad and uh, it was a big gathering of people over there mm -hmm. and I was only age 12 and it was a big school ground and they had uh, spread out mats all over the ground wow. so people can sit on the ground on the mats Praise and God. I was sitting right in the front with my mother and my two younger brothers and uh, the speaker was Dr. G.D. James from Singapore mm. and he was preaching the, the Lord's word and by the end of the preaching he gave an altar call and several people began walking down towards the stage to give their lives to the Lord and I had not heard the message frankly. I was just sitting there and I was playing in the, with my fingers in the dirt and uh, when people started uh, walking towards the stage, I also got up and I walked to the stage. Wow. And uh, then uh, the speaker led people into repentance prayer and everything. And then uh, they had more than 100 counselors mm -hmm. uh, that came out and took one by one, everyone with them so they can have further counseling. and. I was still standing there mm -hmm. and so they thought maybe we need to give him also a counselor and so they sent a young man to take me with him and counsel me mm -hmm. and so the young man took me into a classroom and said uh, uh, would you like to give your life to Jesus and I said yes I would like to give my life to Jesus mm -hmm. and then he explained to me how uh, Jesus came on this earth and he went on the cross, he died for our sins, he bore our sins, he paid the penalty, shed his blood, and by believing in Jesus, you will have forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. and new life, and you'll be saved, and uh, would you like to pray the prayer of repentance with me? And I said, yes. Amen. And so I prayed uh, uh, with that young man, uh, the prayer of repentance and I gave my life to Jesus and uh, what happened was uh, I experienced a very deep peace in my heart I had never experienced that kind of peace in my life mm. I felt like some burden had ro rolled away mm. from my life and from myself and I was so happy and uh, I had such a great peace in my heart which is still today that peace is still with me and uh, I was saved that day and I praise God that I got saved and I gave my life to Jesus and then uh, uh, after I returned back to home and also going regularly to the school and I mm. began telling fellow students about Jesus you see wow. sharing about the Lord and how to get saved with other students in my class and in the school 
And so I praise God for that. And uh, then at the age of 14, I again dedicated my life to the Lord. And uh, it was that time uh, when uh, there was a preacher who came from United States, maybe somewhere near Texas, uh, to India. And I was attending a traditional church. And uh, the speaker came, his name was Bill, his first name was Bill. I think I forgot his last name. And he taught us about the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then uh, he said, uh, would anyone like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. Would you like to experience the Holy Spirit? And uh, any one of you would like to come front. And we can lay hands on you and pray for you. And uh, I went and stood in the front. But no one else came because this is a traditional church. They don't talk much about the Holy Spirit, you see. I see. And I went there and they laid hands on me and prayed for me. And that was it. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise and God. that was the beginning of me starting to preach more of the gospel, telling others about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, even a burden came on me to pray. Mm -hmm. I'll spend so many hours praying and reading the Bible, uh -huh. reading the word of God. And uh, that is what uh, the Lord had done in my life. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, at the age of 16, I completed my high school. And then I was in the university. I did my Bachelor of Science. And du during the university years, I still preached the gospel to the students, to the youth groups, to the student groups. Mm -hmm. I took a lot of gospel tracts and distributed it to the students in the dorms as well as in the university campus mm. and kept on preaching the gospel, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I graduated uh, from the university. It was around age of 19. Mm. And uh, I did my two years of postgraduate uh, of uh, uh, computer technology, uh, diploma in computer technology. And I started uh, working in the company. And in those days, you see, there was no Microsoft Windows. <laughs> and there was no Apple, you see. It was MS-DOS. And uh, the languages I was uh, working in the company was uh, uh, Kabul, writing account, programs for the company mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, using basic language and uh, the computers were not much developed in those days <laughs> and so in the computer department I was all alone actually most of the time uh, working by myself on the computers and all that work and at that time the Lord began to speak to me mm. I had ambitions that I will build my own computer business and my own computer company and I'll make lots of money and that was my ambition. Mm -hmm. But then the Lord began to knock at the door of my heart and he began to speak to me and he spoke to me from the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 13. Mm. And the Lord was calling me to full-time ministry and to resign and give up my job. And it was not easy decision, actually. And the Lord spoke to me from Habakkuk 2, 7, 13. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for fire? Wow. That the nations exhaust themselves for nothing. And the Lord said to me, even you have ambitions, if you work hard and you have your own computer company and a business and make lots of money, and but still everything is going to be for fire, you see. It is the fuel for fire. Wow. Mm -hmm. I want you to do something meaningful for the kingdom of God. And so why don't you resign and come into my ministry to obey my calling. And I said, uh, 
Lord, what do you want me to do? Even uh, uh, previously, uh, Dr. Ken was quoting from the letter of Peter. And in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, it says that the, all this earth and the sky and everything has been reserved for fire. And so, Lord, I don't want to work where everything is going to be for fire. You see? Mm -hmm. And so what should I do? Mm. And then the Lord spoke to me from verse 14, Habakkuk 2, 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. The Lord was telling me, you come out and you preach my gospel, you preach my word, you teach my word. And the aim of God's kingdom is to fill the whole earth for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, you see. Mm. And so you go after my work and my calling and my kingdom. And I said, Lord, who will feed me, you see? If I resign, if I don't work, then who is going to take care of me and my family and what will happen? And the Lord said, I'll provide for you, you see. Mm. I'll take care of you. I bargained with the Lord. See, Lord, allow me to have my own business and my company and I'll earn a lot of money and I'll give it into your kingdom, you see, for God's work. And he said, no, no, no. I don't want your money, you see. I want you to come out and work for me. I want you and I want your life, you see. Hold that thought. I'm going to take a short break. He's going to come back and tell us how that all worked out. And then we're gonna ask him, how's he doing in the ministry now? Stay with me. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with me. I'm here with Dr. Joel. I'm, of course, Dr. Ken. I'll be your host. He was, uh, Dr. Joel was telling us a little bit about how he started the ministry and how he had to give up his big dream about owning his own business. And how many of us have dreamed that but the Lord has called us? Continue on, Doc. Tell yes, us what else yes. I have. And so the Lord spoke to me from Matthew chapter 6, 33. Uh -huh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things I'll provide for you, will be added unto you. That's good. And so I resigned and I came out into the ministry and I began traveling from village to village, town to town, city to city. Mm. And I was uh, preaching the gospel on the streets and in the town squares and in the marketplaces. I began preaching the gospel. Mm. And then uh, finally I felt the Lord was leading me that I should uh, go into more uh, study of the Word of God. And so I did go to a seminary mm. uh, back in India, mm. uh, which is called Union Biblical Seminary, which is one of the best. And there I also, I pray to the Lord. See, my going to the seminary, my aim is to study the Word of God and spend time more with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so you prepare me, you see. And uh, I always kept first in the class, you see. My grades were top grades. Finally, uh, a seminary in the United States invited me to come and continue my further education. And so that's how I came to United States and I had uh, my master's and doctoral degrees done. And uh, then the Lord took me back again to India, you see. Mm. For 14 years, I served as a pastor over a big church over there. Not only that, I went into jungles and forests and those uh, rural areas and I kept on preaching the gospel and planting the churches. And uh, also again, I traveled from village to village, town to town, 
preaching the gospel though i was pastoring a church and i was also teaching in a seminary in the classroom setting i was teaching the students the word of god mm. and preparing them to be evangelists and pastors and missionaries wow and so that's what i was doing i also uh, conducted some crusades and in one of the crusade in amdabad uh, there was a very large crowd we were holding it in a river bed a dry river bed mm -hmm. and the crowd was 500000 you see wow and so god used me to preach the gospel to the masses and then uh, the anti christian thing started developing they won't grant permissions to preach the gospel mm. uh, especially for the crusades and things like that and i was having that church and still the ministry was very strong but then the lord spoke to me and he said your time is up i said lord what your time is up mm. and he said you better go from the this place and uh, i'll take you to another place Mm. and my wife was working in a government job and my son was going to school and i said lord this is hard again you see uh, and you are asking me to go from this place and i said where should i go and the lord said i have my people in united states i have the indian people over there and they need my word mm. and so that's how the lord brought me here and so i came to united states and uh, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, there was a bible college called onesimus bible college one of my friend took me to the president of that bible college and we met and the man said you are qualified academically and in every way we need a man like you and so he appointed me as the dean of that college oh wow and so for 6 years i was the dean for that bible college and then the economy went down and they ran out of funds and uh, uh, it closed down but the lord put me on the bellflower church of god as the senior pastor where i'm pastoring since last wow. 14 years over there wow and so i praise god you see the and also the lord took me into different prisons in california you see i used to go to the federal uh, prison that that is called terminal island mm. and uh, used to preach the gospel over there mm. and uh, i remember one uh, evening i it was going to be christmas time and uh, all the inmates had gathered and i was preaching to them on time you see for for the inmates time serving time doing time is a very important thing and so i preached the gospel message from the time and gave an altar call 40 of them gave their lives to jesus and uh, oh. i also used to go to the san pedro immigration uh, uh, prison in san pedro and preach the gospel i have gone to el centro and mm -hmm. mira loma and also to lancaster and colinga and so many other places god took me into the prisons to preach to the inmates and many of them got saved and i praise god these days god is still using me in the bellflower church of god to preach the gospel and to pray for the people especially the sick people and they give their lives to the lord and so i praise god for that and praise i the thank lord. god while, while you're at it doc would you mind uh, while we're on the subject and running out of time is there's a lot of people in our audience that might not know who jesus is or they they ran into Jesus but they are backslidden if you want to call it that or maybe just misinformed mm -hmm. could you pray for them to come back and uh, like a salvation prayer to encourage them to come back to the Lord to stick with him from this form and on would you mind yes uh all of you it is such a privilege to meet you like this and i would encourage you to believe in lord jesus mm -hmm. because he is your creator and maker he loves you so deeply he is your savior actually and if you give your life to him your life will be changed i know many people are suffering and our economy is getting worse and this is 2023 
the days we are in the last days and many people mm -hmm. even they are not able to pay their uh, housing rents and all that and yes, people get thrown out onto the streets many young people i know serving as a pastor go deeper into drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. and people are depressed and discouraged mm -hmm. let me tell you give your life to jesus ask jesus to come into your heart and pray to him and i tell you your life will be transformed Amen. your life will be changed don't worry the lord will provide for you Amen. he will once you give him uh, the control of your life he will lead and guide your life to be fruitful and to be prosperous Amen. and your life will be blessed and uh, at this time pray in your heart let us pray you see close your eyes and pray in your heart and say jesus lord jesus i come to you i believe in you precious jesus i bring myself to you lord i open my heart to you lord forgive me of all my wrongdoings of all my shortcomings forgive me of all my mistakes lord forgive me all my sins cleanse me in your blood wash me clean oh lord jesus and give me a new heart a new spirit let your holy spirit come into my heart and lord i fully give my life to you from today onwards lord lead me and guide me and take charge of my life and lord i need your help i need you to work deeper work and mighty miracles in my life also at this time if any of one of you are sick you can lay your hands upon your the upon the place of your body where you are hurting mm -hmm. or where you need the touch of the spirit of god to heal you mm -hmm. you can place your hand on that and right now in the name of jesus father god we take authority over all this sickness and diseases that are prevailing in the bodies of these people and these persons lord i rebuke it in jesus name i command you to be uprooted from their bodies in jesus name you have no right to stay in their bodies because they have given their life to jesus father god in the name of jesus i cast out every demonic activity and father god in the name of jesus devil i command you to take your filthy hands off their bodies and let the mighty healing power from the blood and the stripes of jesus flow into their bodies from head to foot right now in jesus name and father god touch them and heal them completely in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah let the healing anointing of the holy spirit is upon you i can see it right now it's flowing upon you right now hallelujah i believe you are feeling the warmth of the fire of the holy spirit upon your body right now you are feeling it wherever you are and you are in the sphere of my voice you are being healed the lord is healing you just thank him thank you jesus say thank you jesus for healing me thank you for healing me and saving me and making me your child thank you lord for ministering to us this afternoon thank you lord bless your people in jesus name amen amen now if you receive that i want you to email dr joel his information will be there and about where his church is if you want to know his church times and uh what day of the week that he ministers at uh, it'll be right there on our screen coming up uh, i also want to mention real quick i'd like to have him back here a, a short period of time and we're going to go into a deeper teaching because he's got a lot of different uh, uh, uh gifts uh, that i want to share with you to encourage you about healing uh not only salvation but also where you are in your ministry and maybe it'll help you and with your walk so look for us next time on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we'll give you a little uh, shout out when we're, uh, Dr. Joel is going to come with us. But until next time, I'm here with Dr. Joel. I'm Dr. Ken. I'll see you next week on Pastor's Perspective.
Publishers Perspective on the Marketplace Network.